Hello there. Not done a video for a while. Probably about uh, two years since I last did one on this channel. But what I wanted to do today is to revisit Soft Image 3D on the IRIX platform. So I'm just going to start the program up. Soft Image Products. Soft 3D 3.9.2 and start the Extreme Package. Give it a few seconds and the soft image splash screen, will, splash screen will come up and we can go into the interface. There it is. Click on that and you go straight into the interface. Just a couple of words about the machine I'm running the program on. It's a Silicon Graphics Octane 2. It's got a 600 MHz processor and it's got the V8 graphics. So it's got the full 128 megabytes of graphics memory which allows you to run the desktop at 1920 by 1280 which is about as high as you can go on the on the Octane. Looking at the interface it's very similar to on the NT platform pretty much identical looks slightly nicer on NT um, slightly better colours and slightly better shading on the buttons but it's pretty much identical so pretty easy to move between the two platforms I'll just um, bring a scene into view and we'll have a play around so I'll get a scene for you just a basic scene just to have a little play around in the system okay wrong one so I'll just delete that delete all best way to get rid of a scene in soft image and get another scene okay let's have a look at this one first let's get the uh, the model into view so we go to camera zoom and we can zoom the model out we can grab it move it into view same with the bottom viewport, zoom it out, move it into view. Okay, if I hit the animation button in the bottom right, we can see it's a simple mouth animation. Um, you can see the wireframe moving around the cheeks and the lips to try and um, give the impression of someone talking. If we change the view in the viewports, so I can change it to a shaded view I can play the animation again and then you can see the woman talking and I can do the same at the, on the bottom view we've got uh, various settings for the viewports we can enable hardware textures we'll put that on, I don't think there's any textures for this uh, model but we'll switch it on anyway. We've got texture repeat, none or grid. You can turn on anti-aliasing, slows it down, and uh, display optimization, which is important on a system like this because compared to modern systems, we don't have a lot of graphics power available. So we tend to leave the optimization on wireframe, which means when we're moving the model in the view, it will revert to wireframe view which is faster for the machine to render and it will um, it'll shade the view when we come to a standstill so if I zoom out you can see how the optimization works you can see it switching from a wireframe view to a shaded view let's delete that let's have a look at something else another animated view bottom right button, the button again to play the animation you can see these balls um, following the paths in the perspective view we've got a schematic view on the bottom right I'll uh, switch on the shading again and then play the animation and uh, we get a pretty good preview of what's, uh, of what's going on delete all let's have a look at a slightly more complex scene 
slightly more complex model and it's the model of Stonehenge so if we orbit the camera you can see the wireframe moves quite nicely in the viewport but let's uh, let's play around with the uh, the settings here so we put it on shaded view again for some reason the wireframe moves more slowly even though it's uh, displaying the same amount of information as before when we come to a standstill the view shades itself so it renders itself in the preview and we can move our model to we got I mean we've got lighting there so we can see what's happening with the shadows to a certain extent let's uh, let's put enable hardware texturing and let's turn the optimization off and see how the graphics perform bit jerky but not too bad still usable with this relatively simple model so let's move it to a, a reasonable position don't, still don't see any textures they're switched on so let's put the texture repeat onto grid and see if we get anything looks like we're not uh, we're not seeing any textures there for some reason but let's uh, let's render the model so if we go to the matter section you can see we've got model motion actor matter and tools so if we were going to do a rendering we'd uh, we'd switch to the matter part of the program program as you can see as we switch between these different modules the menus change on the left and right and we've got a render button here and we've got a, a selection of various renderers we've got the soft image renderer we've got the mental ray 2.1 because this is the extreme package we've got a gl hardware renderer so we can just render using the hardware so let's give mental ray a go i'll just uh, change the setting slightly here because otherwise it won't run so i'll just switch it to a database that it recognizes and then I can render the scene we can see our textures coming out now obviously not uh, a really fantastic uh, scene to demonstrate the system but it's giving you an idea and you can see mental ray rendering it one region at a time just like it does on modern systems if this was a multi-processor system mental ray is extremely scalable so it would speed up by a factor of the number of processors in the machine but we only have one let's have a look at let's try some of the other render settings so that was mental ray let's have a look at the gl hardware renderer so this is using the the graphics hardware, the V8 graphics hardware in the machine, so let's see what that can do. Instantaneous render, you can see the difference in speed there, and uh, looks quite good. Textures are there. Textures are there, not bad. And then the soft image renderer, we'll give that a go. see if there's much of a difference between that and mental ray speed wise yeah it's faster and it gives um, it gives a pretty good output as well I'll revisit this package with some proper models and uh, proper scenes that I've, I've done myself and um, I'll demonstrate it properly but uh, I just wanted to get a video up there to show the uh, the program running on the octane okay so i'll leave it there for now i don't want to go on too much hope it's been of some interest it has been to me to get the machine up and running again and just a final word in regard to comparison between the octane and the vintage nt system i was running on i found um, 
playing around with loads of different graphics cards from Quadros to later Wild uh, 3D Labs uh, graphics cards. I found um, that only certain models have drivers that work correctly with um, Soft Image 3D uh, 3.7 that I was using. So I found the the Wildcat 7 series was the optimal card to use um, quadros of the time and later quadros the drivers aren't quite right it doesn't uh, display correctly and the later uh, Wildcat um, 800 series um, again driver problems so I found that the 7 series so uh, Wildcat it, it is the it's the optimal a card to use and I I managed to get hold of a couple of the um, top of the range cards uh, with the the full um, graphics memory and the full um, texture memory on the cards and uh, they run very nicely and in comparison to the to the Octane machine the 3D Labs platform is much is much superior it's much faster um, I mean, Eryx, it's a great operating system. I love, you know, using the SGI. It's fantastic. But just on hardware power, the um, the vintage Wildcat card of the time, it's um, it's streets ahead of um, anything that uh, SGI had available for the for the Octane. So V8, V12, any of the um, of those Odyssey graphics options they're nowhere near the, the Wildcat and with the interface being so similar on the NC platform um, if I was going to choose between the two of it, if I was using the, the package uh, professionally or was using it a lot as, a, as an amateur I'd probably uh, choose the NC Wildcat platform so thinking back to that era um, it was really good value because uh, the cards were expensive probably cost in the region of about three thousand pounds or four or five thousand dollars for the top of the range card but compared to the Octane system you could probably build an NC system up for a tenth of the price of the SGI system and get uh, much greater performance probably in the region of ten times faster than the, the Octane system. It, if anyone's got uh, you know some more hard data regarding that performance comparison please let me know because you know I'm interested to hear people's opinions. Okay so hopefully I'll get back with some uh, some interesting videos uh, looking at some other vintage hardware soon and uh, see you all later.